and uh, you can go on in the scripture, but then I think about all the mothers of our great men in history that influenced them, our presidents, our congressmen, our clergymen, that have helped uh, their moms, have helped to mold the destiny of our country. George Washington, our first president, lost his father at the age of 11. And here's what George Washington said. What graces that he, that he had must be attributed to his mother, who was pure and noble. And then John Quincy Adams said, All that I am, my mother made me. Abraham Lincoln said, he, he said, he said, Mother set him on her knee and read to him the Bible when he was just a little boy. He, she died when he was at the age of nine. And when he was asked why he was so honest in later years, he said, I can still clearly hear the tones of my mother's voice as she spoke to me of the Lord God who gave the commandments. So some great men in our history have been molded by the influence of a mother. I wonder today, ladies, if we would have ever heard of John and Charles Wesley if it hadn't been for their mother, uh, a faithful saint of God, Suzanne Wesley. I'm sure all of you have read about her. And you know, the Bible talks about us having our closet place to pray. Well, uh, if you read about Suzanne Wesley, she didn't have a closet to pray in. They, there was children everywhere in her house. A child here and a child there, children, children everywhere. <laughs> and they said just children everywhere. But the children knew if, uh, if Mama threw her apron over her head, leave her alone, Mama's praying. And I believe with all of my heart, it was Mother's prayers that molded the lives of John and Charles Wesley, and God used them mightily. And then I say to you ladies today, uh, and there's been much said about my mom in these last two days, and I appreciate that. Where would I be today without a praying mom? All I've ever known about prayer, I learned it at my mother's knees. Uh, her praying influenced my life. As a little girl, I would go up uh, to the bedroom where she would steal away and pray and just listen to my mom pray. And I thought that God answered every prayer she prayed just exactly like she prayed them. I really did. It just seemed like he did. Now, I know now that he probably didn't because we don't always pray just right. Aren't you thankful God hasn't answered every prayer you prayed like? you prayed it and God knows best but I thought he did her praying influenced me and because it made me want to pray and I can remember uh, after I got saved excuse me ladies when I would pray about something there was a few times if I really 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 wanted the Lord to do it I'd ask my mom to help me pray because I knew he'd hear her prayers. But there were times, as a little girl, I think, I wonder if God would do this for me without my mom praying. Would it be my prayers of her so I wouldn't tell her what I was praying about just to see if God would hear her daughter like he heard her. And, you know, when he would answer my prayer, I'd run to mother and say, Oh, Mama, guess what God did for me? So I found out the God that she prayed to would answer my prayer. So she influenced my life. And then just her joy. She was the happiest. Now, she was just as mean as a snake. I mean, she just cut up all the time. I think she was bad. You know, always into something, always getting herself in trouble, but loved the Lord with all of her heart and was as happy as you could be. Happy in the Lord. And um, I, she made me realize that living for God and living for Christ was not something dull and dreary, but it's a happy habit. Somebody asked my mother one day, said, Mrs. Bill, do you ever get down? She said, I don't have time to get down. She said, but the, if I wake up down the least bit any day, my phone will ring and somebody will be asking me something about the Lord. And time I get through talking about him, I'm happy again. And that's the truth, ladies. She influenced my life to let me know that the Christian life is a life full of joy. The song is right, isn't it? It is joy unspeakable and full of, is it really, ladies? You know, I found out. We come to church and we sing that song. Do y'all sing that here? It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory. And in our hearts, it's not. We're, we're not happy in the Lord. Shame on this, ladies. Do you ever get convicted about the songs you sing? 
And really, ladies, if we sing that song and we don't have joy in our heart, we ought to say, what's wrong, Lord? Because he wants us to be happy in the Lord. Amen? Amen, ladies. Thank you. Now, and then her desire to win souls influenced my life. Now, she was a, a gifted soul winner. I, I don't have the personal gift of soul winning, I don't think, because I don't do as well. But I love souls. And, and her, her gift, she put a desire in my heart to tell everybody I can about the Lord. I remember as a little girl, I would ask her, Mom, would you let me go with you to witness to people? And she'd say, no, Loretta, three's a crowd. You know, she'd always have one other lady to go with her. That's wise because you never know what might be told on you. And so she'd have another lady go with her. And I'd say, oh, Mom, please let me go. Just please let me go. And I remember one time, and I think the Lord was in this. She, she finally said, okay, you can go with me. And now she said, you go in, you sit down, don't you make a move. I promise, Mother, I'll go in and be really good. So I went in. But let me tell you how it started. The Lord put this lady on my mom's heart. Her name was Mary Ruth Wilson. She did not like my mom. She did not know my mom except through her sister. Her sister went to church with my mother. And I don't know why, but for some reason, she just literally did not like my mom. I wonder if Satan knew that God was going to use my mother to witness to her. And, and uh, the Lord put her on my mother's heart, uh, was having a revival meeting at our church. And before my dad ever started preaching, and God put her on her heart to go visit her. And my mom, that's the only time I ever knew she's scared. But she said, Woo wee, this lady doesn't like me. And Lord, I don't know about you, but, but the Lord said, I want you to go. And so Mother let me go with her on that occasion. And I can remember going and Mother knocking on the door. And Miss Mary Ruth came to the door. And my mom said, Can we come in? And she said, Well, you can, but it won't do you no good. Well, now, right there's where I said, well, it's just a joy to come by. I just want to tell you, I love you. God loves you. Bye. That's just the way I am, you know. But my mom said, how do you know it won't do you any good, do us any good? This may be your day. And I thought, woo-wee, here we go. And so I sit down, and, and my mom started. And I can't tell you what all she said, but she just started telling her about the Lord. And Miss Mary Ruth was resenting every word of it. I could see it. But then all of a sudden, I saw Miss Mary Ruth reach over to the Kleenex box and she went, <laughs> dab in her eyes. And I thought, ooh, something's about to happen. And you know, and, and again, it was, it's making her mad, but she couldn't keep her crying. And then that went on for a few minutes and my mom just kept on talking. And finally, she broke. And she said, oh, Martha, Oh, oh, she said, I'm so miserable. She said, I've been so miserable for a while. And she said, I really, really need to get saved. She said, I've hated you through the years. She said, if I saw you in town, I'd make my husband take me home. That's how much she hated my mom. Just, I guess, fear that my mom was going to talk to her. And I'm surprised that my mother didn't get down right there and win her to the Lord. But she said, okay, if you really want to get saved, you come to revival tonight. So we went to church that night, and I wondered if she'd be there. She was there. One of the first persons there at the service, the preacher preached that night. And he did what most preachers do. He said at the end of his sermon, if there's uh, anybody here tonight that feels like the Holy Spirit is dealing with your heart, and you want us to pray for you, would you just raise your hand and let us pray for you? And I heard something. I, of course, we all had our heads bowed, and I heard something back there, and, and there was hands going in there, and this woman was saying, it's me, preacher, it's me, it's me, preacher, it's me. And he said, well, dear lady, just come on and get saved. And she was gloriously saying, have I been blessed, people, to have a mother like that? I mean, have I been blessed? I just want to pause right now and say, thank God for the things that I learned from my mother and how she influenced my life.